Long lie, guys. Well, back again from that long, strange trip to the Golden State. Good Lord, what a whirlwind tour that was. <laughs> but I am back in New York, baby. It is 19 degrees. It, it is a balmy 19 degrees here in the tiny house. Uh, this is my seven foot by seven foot tiny house. For those of you who don't know, and it is a balmy 19 degree. It is a Monday, December 26, 2022. And uh, so anyway, for all the newcomers to uh, <laughs> Collapse Chronicles, uh, you might be finding for the first time that this is actually a a two-man show here. And this is the real star of Collapse Chronicles. The little doomer dog himself, Sancho Panza. So uh, say hi to the folks, uh, Sancho. So uh, Sancho Panza is the one who has to endure all of my doom and gloom rants. So anyway, some of you might recognize Sancho Panza is Don Quixote's sidekick. So uh, this is my little sidekick in doom, the little dog Sancho Banza. So anyway, he will be a regular feature here on Collapse Chronicles, but uh, obviously uh, <laughs> this story, good Lord, how many of you sent me this one? And I actually found a condensed version of this in the mainstream media on Christmas Day, but this actually snuck through on Christmas Eve and I have sort of been predicting this story. I was a little bit off in two directions. Number one, I said you would be reading this story in the year 2020. Not, and so I was a little off on the year that I predicted this story came out. But the other big thing about this story is, is whenever I was thinking about my predictions, I was talking about either governments or lone wolves uh, trying to save the planet by killing the planet. Um, and I did not, I, I mean, the, the obvious went right over my doomer head that, of course, it is the global corporatocracy. Never occurred to me that maybe it was somebody looking for a buck uh, would be the first one to uh, start this uh, project off. And of course, the project we're talking about is got several, uh, several names for it. Well, it's a form of geoengineering called Solar Radiation Management, SRM. Uh, we've been talking about this on this channel since day one and particularly talking about dumping sulfur dioxide particles up in the stratosphere to save the planet from uh, global warming. Some uh, conspiracy wackos, and I used to be one, would call these things cap, I'm sorry, chemtrails. And I do think uh, that is the story that we will be reading. So this is how the story has actually <coughs> taken form about uh, how the global corporatocracy is taking us out of the frying pan into the fire. And so one of the major, one of the major uh, frying pan versus the fire choices we're going to be making as a global civilization over uh, the next few years and decades is do we fight global warming by dumping chemicals into the stratosphere? So this is one of those is we're doomed if we do, doomed if we don't. Either way we're doomed. If we don't start doing something radical like this, we're doomed. If we do start doing something radical like this, we're doomed. There's no way out of this one. Frying pan 
or fire. And so while uh, we're all sitting around waiting for either some government somewhere or some lone wolf Ted Kaczynski type to start dumping uh, chemicals into the stratosphere, we have a corporation stepping up to the plate. And this comes from MIT Technology Review. And uh, take it away, MIT. <coughs> a startup says it has begun. It's not thinking about. It has already begun releasing particles in the uh, into the atmosphere in an effort to tweak to tweak the climate. We have some serious tweakers out there. We have some corporate tweakers. Uh, doing their best. Uh, anyone who's familiar with a tweaker knows exactly what we're dealing with here. This is a group called Make Sunsets, <laughs> which is kind of ironic since these things will eventually completely obliterate sunsets off the face of the planet. Make Sunsets is already attempting to earn revenue for geoengineering a move likely to provoke widespread criticism. And this is a pretty long article, and uh, I might not get to the end, but I'm going to put the link on here for you to read this yourself. Anybody who does not understand why we're doomed if we do, doomed if we don't, anybody who does not understand the difference between the frying pan and the fire, crystal clear example here. A startup claims it has launched weather balloons that may have, hmm, weather balloons that may have released reflective sulfur particles into the stratosphere, potentially crossing a controversial barrier in the field of solar geoengineering. Uh, so for those of you, uh, I guess, new to this rabbit hole, geoengineering refers to deliberate efforts to manipulate the climate by reflecting more sunlight back into space. Well, solar radiation management geoengineering refers to deliberate efforts to manipulate the climate by reflecting more sunlight back into space, mimicking a natural process that occurs in the aftermath of large volcanic eruptions. In theory, spraying <coughs> sulfur and similar particles <coughs> in sufficient quantities could potentially ease global warming. It is not technically difficult to release such compounds into the stratosphere. And as I think they'll talk about later, there is no law against it. Anybody can do this. There is no law. Uh, any individual, any country from the United States down to Honduras can start doing this. Uh, and now, uh, obviously, uh, there is nothing to stop any global corporation from uh, taking us out of the frying pan into the fire. I mean, it, it, it makes the most sense that it would be the global corporatocracy that would end up uh, doing this. What was I thinking? All right. <clears throat> it's not technically difficult to release such compounds into the stratosphere. But scientists have mostly, though not entirely, refrained from carrying out even small-scale outdoor experiments. And it's not clear that any have yet injected materials into that specific layer of the atmosphere in the context of geoengineering-related research. But uh, what they're hinting at in that paragraph is there are several uh, projects 
going on, uh, I think, with Harvard and maybe with MIT itself, and you know, following the green light from uh, the Save the Planet president, Joe Biden, uh, that they're, they're playing around with this, uh, and it will, it's going to happen. That's the important part. Anyway, that's in part because it is highly controversial. Little is known about the real-world effects of such deliberate intervention at large scales, but they could have dangerous side effects. The impacts could also be worse in some regions than others, which could provoke geopolitical conflicts. You know, they're talking about uh, just how any country can do this, can fire off, whether it's planes, balloons, rockets, whatever the delivery system of this stuff is, uh, it, it can take off from, from anywhere uh, and then spread all around the planet into the atmospheres of, uh, of any other country on the planet. Uh, crazy times. Uh, some researchers who have long studied the technology are deeply troubled that the company Make Sunsets appears to have moved for, forward with launches from a site in Mexico without any public engagement or scientific scrutiny. It's already attempting to sell, quote, cooling credits, cooling credits credits for future balloon flights that could carry larger payloads. And these guys are just looking ahead, figuring out what are they going to come up, you know, the, these BS, they have these BS carbon credits, and now they have these B, the, the, the equally BS biodiversity credits. And so I think they're pretty smart for you predicting that uh, other corporations are going to want to start buying cooling credits to offset their warming uh, <laughs> cooling credits. Several researchers uh, we spoke with condemned the effort to commercialize geoengineering at this early stage, some potential investors and customers who have reviewed the company's proposals say that it is not a serious scientific effort or a credible business, but more of an attention grab designed to stir up controversy in the field. Luke Eisman, the co-founder and CEO of Make Sunsets, acknowledges that the effort is part entrepreneurial and part provocation, an act of geoengineering activism. Eisman hopes that by moving ahead in the controversial space, the startup will help drive the public debate and push forward a scientific field that has faced great difficulty carrying out small-scale field experiments amid criticism. Uh, we joke slash not joke that this is partly a company and partly a cult, he says. Yep, yep, yep. Um, <clears throat> Eisman says he expects to be pilloried by both geoengineering critics and researchers in the field for taking such a step, and he recognizes that, quote, making me look like the Bond villain is going to be helpful to certain groups, close quote. But he says climate change is such a grave threat and the world has moved so slowly to address the underlying problem that more radical interventions are now required. Quote, 
it's morally wrong, in my opinion, for us not to be doing this. He says, what is, what is important is, quote, to do this as quickly and safely as we can, close quote. And of course, it's that word safely. <clears throat> but dedicated experts in the field think such efforts are wildly premature and could have the opposite effect from what Eisman expects. Uh, <clears throat> this is... Uh, James Pastor, executive director of the Carnegie Climate Government I Initiative, quote, the current state of the science is not good enough to either reject or to accept, let alone implement solar ge and geoengineering. Uh, he said the initiative is calling for oversight of geoengineering and other, the, you know, uh, pastors group, the Carnegie Climate Governance in Initiative, uh, is calling for oversight of geoengineering and other climate-altering technologies, whether by government's international accords or scientific bodies, quote, to go ahead with implementation at this stage is a very bad idea. He added, um, let's see, uh, Sush Shuchi Talati from American University uh, blah, 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 S says make sunsets actions could set back the scientific field, reducing funding, dampening government support for trusted research, and accelerating calls to restrict studies. Uh, so uh, who knows how all this is going to play out. The company's behavior plays into long-held fears that a rogue actor with no particular knowledge of atmospheric science or the implica implications of the technology could unilaterally choose to geoengineer the climate without any kind of consensus around whether it's okay to do so or what the global or what the appropriate global average temperature should be. That is because it is relatively cheap and technically simple to do, at least in a crude way. Um, David Victor, political science at UC San Diego, warned of such a scenario more than a decade ago saying, quote, a green finger, self-appointed protector of the planet, could force a lot of geoengineering on his own, he said, uh, invoking the gold finger character from James Bond. Uh, some observers were quick to draw parallels between make sunsets and a decade-old decade old incident in which an American entrepreneur reportedly poured a hundred tons of iron sulfate into the ocean in an effort to spawn a plankton bloom that could aid salmon populations and suck down carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Critics say that violated international restrictions on what's known as iron fertilization. Uh, so that's another form of geoengineering they're talking about. Don't have time to get in that. Uh, Pastor and others stress that make sunsets efforts underscore the urgent need 
to establish broad-based oversight and clear rules for responsible research yeah, into geoengineering and help determine whether or under what conditions there should be a social license to move forward with experiments or beyond. A, <clears throat> the, the Biden administration also is developing a federal research plan that would guide how scientists proceed with geoengineering studies. By Eisman's own description, the first two balloon launches were very rudimentary. He says they occurred in April uh, in Baja, California. Uh, Eisman says he pumped a few grams of sulfur dioxide into weather balloons and added what he estimated would be the right amount of helium to carry them into the atmosphere. Uh, <laughs> anyway, this sounds like some real uh, Keystone cops. Uh, he has no idea what happened to his balloons after he released them. He acknowledges uh, he did not seek any approvals from government authorities or scientific agencies in Mexico or anywhere else before the first two launches. Uh, he's saying he just wanted to confirm that he could do it. Uh, a 2018 paper raised the possibility that an environmental, humanitarian, or other type of group could use this simple balloon approach to carry out a distributed do-it-yourself geoengineering scheme. In future work, Make Sunsets hopes to increase the sulfur payloads, add telemetry equipment and other sensors, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and obviously the company is already attempting to earn revenue from the cooling effects of future flights. It is offering to sell $10 cooling credits for releasing one gram of particles into the atmosphere enough, it asserts, to offset the warming effect of one ton of carbon for one year. Uh, this guy is out of his mind. He's completely out of his mind. Quote, what I want to do is create as much cooling as quickly as I responsibly can over the rest of my life. Frankly, Eisman says, adding that, he, that they will deploy as much sulfur in 2023, quote, as we can get customers to pay us for. The company says it has raised $750,000 in funding from Boost VC and Pioneer Fund, among others. Um, I've already forgot who Talati this uh, some some sort of uh, some sort of scientist who I already forgot who he is. Talati was highly critical of the company's scientific claims, stressing that no one can credibly sell credits that purport to represent such a specific per gram outcome given vast uncertainty at this stage of research. Quote, what they're claiming to actually accomplish with such a credit is the entirety of what is uncertain right now about geoengineering. Uh, <clears throat> Kelly Wanser, executive director of Silver Lining, a nonprofit that supports research efforts on climate risk, 
and potential interventions like geoengineering agreed, quote, from a business perspective, reflective cooling effects and risks cannot currently be quantified in any meaningful way, making the offering a speculative form of junk credit that is unlikely to have value to climate credit markets, close quote. Talati adds that it is hypocritical of Make Sunsets to assert they're acting on humanitarian grounds while moving ahead without meaningfully engaging with the public, including with those who could be affected by their actions. Quote, they are violating the rights of communities to dictate their own future, close quote. David Keith, one of the world's leading experts on solar geoengineering, says that the amount of material in question less than 10 grams of sulfur per, per flight does not represent any real environmental danger. A commercial flight can emit about 100 grams per minute, he points out. Keith and his colleagues at Harvard have worked for years to move forward on a small scale stratospheric experiment which has been repeatedly delayed, but he says he is troubled by any effort to privatize core geoengineering technologies, including patenting them or selling credits for the release, because, quote, commercial development cannot produce the level of transparency and trust, yeah, right, and trust the world needs to make sensible decisions about deployment. Yes, Keith says a private company would have financial motives to oversell the benefits, to downplay the risks, and to continue selling its services even as the planet cools to lower than pre-industrial temperatures. Quote, doing it as a startup is a terrible idea. For its part, the company says it's operating on the best modeling research available today and that it will adjust its practices as it learns more and hopes to collaborate with nations and experts to guide these efforts as it scales up. Uh, quote, we are convinced, we are convinced solar geoengineering is the only feasible path to staying below 2C of warming over pre-industrial levels, and we will work with the scientific community to deploy this life-saving tool as safely and quickly as possible. Close quote, Eisman said, but, but critics stress that the time to engage with experts and the public would have been before the company began injecting material into the stratosphere and trying to sell cooling credits and that, is, and that it's likely to face an icy reception from many of those parties now. And uh, I don't think they're gonna face an icy reception at all. Uh, I, I think a, a lot more. Uh, you're, 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 a, a lot of people are reading this and saying, damn it, why didn't I think of that? You know, a 14-year-old Ted Kaczynski in a mud hut in Bangladesh could pull this off. Anyway, guys, uh, take your pick, frying pan or the fire. <coughs> but anyway, I'm having an icy reception here in my tiny house, and I need to go uh, stir the little dog's chicken and rice. I, I cook Sancho's chicken and brown rice. Yes, I'm 
heading out to go cook your dinner. Anyway, get out there and enjoy your uh, making sunsets while you still can. Bye, guys.